Hey everyone, this is my reaction to the fourth episode of Honzuki no Gekko Kujo. And last episode, I mean, it's really not much a recap of these episodes, just mine continues to make the best ever living situation and improve things and create things and invent things and impress people with all the things she knows and helps them. And that's just kind of the, uh, the, the loop, the formula for the show. And I enjoy watching it, so let's watch more of it. Three, two, one, go. Yeah, the ancient Egypt thing didn't work out. <laughs> yeah, we'll see how that goes. It's nice how mine's story is also kind of framed like a book story, you know? Very fitting. And uh, my cat's also sleeping back there. I mean, usually is. Onzuki no... Yeah, Geku Kujo. Family or ordered from smallest to biggest. And then order from biggest to smallest. <laughs> you know, until she gets up front. That twin tailed girl there, do we know her yet? I know we were introduced to a bunch of, like, her friends earlier. I don't know if she was one of them, though. I feel like I would have remembered her. So I don't know. And yeah, it is a snowy country, as we kind of saw last episode. So, you know, good country to stay indoors and read books, I guess. But no, the twin-tailed twin twin girl looks kind of like a noble. Yeah, forest and clay tablets. Be impressed. Yeah, you know, no big deal. I whip up a feast or two. Just a smug look on her face. It's brilliant. <laughs> uh, boiling it, you know? Kind of important to do. Oishi? I knew it. Yeah, it's because she made it. <laughs> I only love you. I just love the look on her face so much. Uh. Yeah, she's a genius. What more do you want? Oh, <laughs> I mean, I have to work. I never said I want to work. Uh. Just the visualizations we get of what's going on in her head are just... Very, very amusing. <laughs> did I say something? Did I say something funny? What? Uh, you said I can't work in the forest. Yeah, then I'll give up on that after a couple days. Did you make a book out of stone tablets? I mean, but yeah, I guess going by herself would be a bit much. I mean, somebody would have to carry her, but that's the only issue. Uh, I guess this is not easy to do. Abedoto will let me go. Okay, gotta start lifting. So, that could be a... 
Could be a while. Yes, of course, because she's good at that. Do you even know, mine? She can handle literally anything that's not physical. <laughs> yeah. To employ an unbaptized child. Yeah, on paper. But yeah, before you're seven years old, that's way too early to be working, you know. She's very smart and very cute. Don't forget that. Okay, so a possible connection to nobility. Like a way to it maybe interact with some nobles. Nice. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure she will. Terms, huh? <laughs> uh, I feel like she should get some money, but oh well. <laughs> yeah, you know. You can take advantage of a small child for business reasons, why wouldn't you? I guess. Like, here, give my work for me, I'll pay you in candy. <laughs> you know, under the table candy. <laughs> I don't know. Can't overthink it. And, yeah. Of course. Huh. Yeah, you better not. Letters! Okay, finally. 35 letters. So that's, yeah, it's about what uh, English has. More or less. Because she's super smart. And besides, you know, her language involves learning thousands of characters. I think she can handle this. <laughs> okay. I guess she's in charge now. It's like a teacher now. <laughs> uh, well, she took over. Yes, similar to how girls will be girls. <laughs> uh. Wow. <laughs> yeah, don't compare us. Like, it's not even a... It gets ridiculous to compare. You better. Mine knows best. Uh. Mine might be one of the smartest people in the world. At least that, that you know. <laughs> uh, I'm getting a Mario flashbacks. New words. I think like we were learning new words. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, not to brag or anything, but I'm getting pretty good. That almost that almost sounds patronizing. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
No, we don't know how to write loot, and we never will. We get wrecked. Yeah, still struggling. I wonder if she'll ever actually get better. Because she's, you know, took over the body. But... I don't know if that would help cause any physical changes. But it would be nice if she could get a bit stronger. Uh. See, it's warming up a bit. I, I, I didn't have enough time to solve that. Give me a few hours. I, I can, I can do it. Wow. Uh, okay. Guess I answered that question. I guess she is getting a bit stronger. Well, well, she wanted to go, so of course she'd be happy about being able to go. Oh, well, that's not good. You, you can't go like this. You clearly do not look well enough. Little stars. I'm pretty sure stars are enormous. They just look small because you're far away from them. They probably don't know that, though. Okay. I find question the validity of the story. Uh, title's Ascendance of a Bookworm, so what does she ascend to in the end? I like she looks small even when she's next to other children. It shows you how tiny she is. Like, I feel like I could pick her up with one hand. Like, grab the scruff of her shirt and just kind of carry her around. <clears throat> like you had a cat, you know? And... <laughs> well, yeah, I kind of figured that's how that would go. Maybe you could try a sharper, maybe more metal shovel. I know it might be hard to find, but... Make your own. I'm trying to dig. Why are you yelling at me? Not to dig? Okay. Right, I get it. I Yeah, that makes sense. But... Well, she's repeated it, but I don't think she meant it. Yeah, that is what it means. A smart kid, actually. Sui, you know? <laughs> okay. Yes, I did. Uh, he's really letting her have it here, isn't he? Trying to make paper, just make books, and nothing ever works out for me. Well, it's nice for him to help. Because he likes you. <laughs> it's like, yeah, the person made me these pancakes, I, they, I, they are my savior, I will, I will help them for life. You wouldn't understand. But I guess we could try. I 
This is the this is it. This is squishy stuff. <laughs> yeah, that would be pretty ridiculous. Yeah, out of mud, as you do. Yeah. See. Voila, letters. Yes, they're letters. You even can't read them, you should know what they are. Like, you should just recognize them when you see them. Yeah. Books are pretty cool. Before then, everyone had to just remember everything, and it was rough. Because there's kind of a limit to how much you can remember, you know? Yeah, I guess books are pretty special. She is a bookworm through and through. <laughs> yeah. As interesting as all that was, I gotta go back to my job. Yeah, we're working on this book. Which I could read what she's writing. But I can't. <laughs> it was like Mesopotamia beat ancient Egypt. Tell them it's thick to dry. Don't step on it. That probably wouldn't help. Oh, you jerk. Don't. Oh, that is so messed up. Uh, I actually felt pain as that first stomp happened. Uh, I want to stab all of these children. Like, how could you possibly think that was okay to do? Yeah, I just saw something that wasn't mine. I thought I'd destroy it. What did I do wrong? Oh. Uh, what's happening? <laughs> what the heck? Uh, is she gonna go Super Saiyan? <laughs> yeah, this is... Took a lot of work to get to this point. Uh, I'm still a bit concerned by the glowing, though. Doesn't make it okay. <laughs> yeah, you better cower. It doesn't make it okay. You still don't go up to something you don't know about and just destroy it before anything else. That is so many levels of not okay. Yeah, you better. Those kids better make up for that. Uh, of course. Uh. Yeah, the rain's not really anyone's fault. The game at this point at all is still your fault, so... <sighs> well, yeah, hopefully we can find a better way to make books, but... Yeah, I mean, she really wants to read them, not really write them, but she's doing what she can do for now. Au revoir. Okay. Traveling like a merchant or something? Okay, yeah, uh, traitor. That's, that could be pretty fun. Well, yeah, I, why would you think I would have a problem with it?
The place with a lot of books. <coughs> yeah, it's a little bit harder now. <coughs> I have a feeling they'll find at least one library, though. But look how far we've come. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, nice. That makes sense. I was wondering as well what she wrote, so... Would be a lot to accept. Ah, uh, it's so sweet. It's too precious. If anything else goes wrong, you know, like breaking uh, clay tablets explosion. Uh, I'm just, I'm so used to everything going wrong that I just kind of expected something to happen there. Uh, mine. Well, yeah, that was that. Uh. Baptisms and strange fevers. <laughs> It never is. And what's next? <laughs> Not sure that's exactly what she meant, but... Oh, you mean you'll finally be relevant to the story? Are you going to be the one doing the baptism? Aw. Uh, get wrecked. But he's important, I think. Okay, that was the fourth episode of Honsuki no Gekko Kujo. And yeah, I mean, the main plot's still continuing to be mine attempting to make books. And she was going down the path of the Mesopotamia, you know, trying to make these clay tablets and stuff. But she, of course, runs into a lot of problems. Like, first she had to go to the forest, which meant that she needed to get permission to go to the forest. Which is difficult to do because she's so weak and sickly and they don't really trust her to go that far, you know. So she had to prove to them that she was capable of that by going to the gate by herself, you know, multiple times. And she goes there for some some stuff with Oto, where she sort of teaches a class, it seems. Like, uh, I don't want to go back to that part. Okay, because 
Okay, so she gets there. Now being carried, of course. And he introduces her as a new classmate. So as if there's as if there's like got a full on class. Which, you know, we somehow have, I guess. And they all have their own little little setup to do some writing. And he mentions that the alphabet has thirty five letters. So, you know, more than English does. But still. Yeah, I'm going to assume that the letters are in a row here, like from beginning to end. So the first one would be A. Uh, that one kind of looks like a B, kind of looks like a C, backwards D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M. Well, that's more like a W. N, O, P. But well, that one looks more like P than that one does. I don't know. It, it's definitely meant to look kind of like, you know, Romaji, but I don't know. But, because uh, we have like... We have like an upside down M. It looks like a W where the M should be, and then we have like a, a we have like an M where you throw around where you think the W would be. So it's a, I don't know, it's a little bit weird. There's like one that looks exactly like an L, but I, it's not an L spot. So I don't know. But the point is, we're teaching the kids how to write, and they don't seem to be all that great at it, with the exception of mine, of course, because she's incomparable to them. It surely does look a lot more pale than they do. <laughs> yeah, I much prefer this to physical activities because you can actually do this, you know. And yeah, at some point she just kind of took over the class, being like, okay, I think it's enough alphabet. I think it's time for numbers now because they seem like they don't care anymore, so. But yeah, once you've lost focus, you're not going to teach someone anything else. You know. Although I really don't know how motivated they are to learn to begin with, so. But it's very hard to teach someone something if they don't care to learn it, you know? Because I remember going to, to school, and I did not care about the most of the things that they tried to teach me. I only went to school because it was literally required to by law. So, and that's probably why I didn't learn a whole lot. So, but she can read a class pretty well. <clears throat> Seems a little bit more cut out to be a teacher than Oto, which makes sense because she can do just, you know, many, many things. But yeah, she, some of the looks that she gives on her face are just very, very unique, very attention grabbing, very expressive. But yeah, part, part way through the episode, she might actually to talk about kind of when she first got to this world and she first took over her mind's body. Mm. And how she kind of had some trouble accepting that, which makes a lot of sense. I mean, one day, imagine you go from your life as a, you know, Japanese high school or wherever she was, and then one day wake up, not only in a completely different world with you know, much lower tech, but also you're completely different. You're, not, you're now a, a child living in a completely different world. Like, you have a completely new family that knows you, and you sort of know them, but not really. Like, you know them because you have the memories of the person you're now inhabiting, but you've basically inherited this completely different life that's not yours, that you have no choice but to now live out to the best of your abilities. And you have a weak body on top of all that, which has it just only add to frustration. So just, once I got to that part, I started to just really kind of think about how horrible of a situation that would be. But, you know, luckily she did seem to have a very nice mother that was very... You know, very supportive. I mean, Charlotte didn't know what was going on with mine, but she still knew that she was, you know, sad and sick and stuff and did her best to help with that. So it's pretty nice. Like all that stuff about that was really great, especially how we expanded on that later on with the stories that she tells, told her she, that she remembers she wanted to preserve that in a book of her own. Like that's what she just chose to write. And once that was revealed, you know, that... It really got me here. That was really, really nice. Makes a lot of sense. Because I was wondering for a while what she was writing, because a book is just a means to get across something, but you still have to have something you want to write in the end. So. Yeah, one of my favorite unique aspects of the show is definitely the, you know, the metaphors for expressing her thoughts, you know, the little visualizations of things she does. But that's a lot of fun. And she eventually was able to go to the forest to do her thing. However, apparently it was under the... There was an agreement that she would have to go there, rest, and then come back. Which makes a lot of sense. Like, I fully get where the parent's coming from. 
uh, when, he, when he says that. However, I also get where the child's coming from, where it's like, well, I'm already here. Like, it would be a waste not to do it, so I gotta do it, you know? And, uh, yeah, I get where she's coming from as well. But, you know, it's still a mistake, you know? But, yeah, we even had a flashback when she agreed to it. And you could tell, like, the way she responded to him, it was very robotic. Like, she was just going through the motions. You could tell she was not being genuine at all. So, the father was paying attention. He probably could have known, known that she didn't mean it. But yeah, in this scene, Lutz basically just completely goes off on her. Like, you know, he was fully in the right. Like, I'm not trying to say he wasn't or anything. But, you know. It's still, I just don't like being, seeing people scold my favorite character. You know, that's all it comes down to. But nothing he said was wrong. And he wasn't asked up to help out with her, which is great. You know, and... and uh, as a thank you for the Haru cakes and stuff, you know. And we were able to actually get the clay. We are able to write in it. We got it all set up. And we eventually got, like, you know, a bunch of them. And then we saw a couple of the other kids show up, you know. And they saw them, you know. I'll tell you, what I thought was going to happen at this part was that, you know, when I first saw them running towards it, running into this area I, I was thinking what i imagined in my head was like one of them would accidentally step on like a corner of it and be like oh oops my bad you know and then i would get a little bit angry about it but it'd be like oh it's okay it's just, it was an accident you know it's 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 just they should just apologize and maybe help even fix it or something but no there was no accident there they saw something that wasn't theirs they knew nothing about their immediate response was to destroy it that that really, really bothered me. I don't know how much it came across in the reaction, but just, mm, like, I know they're children. You can't get too mad at them for this kind of thing, but I did anyway. Just, you just infuriated me so much. Like, the, right when I saw the first stomp, just, uh, I could feel it. Like, I could just feel it. And, of course, mine was very understandably upset about this. And, uh, just very crushing scene but she yeah she actually had her eyes start to glow you know get a kind of rainbow effect and then a yellow glow around her and like i legit did not know what to expect here because <clears throat> this anime has a little bit of a supernatural element because she is a kind of course but beyond that not much of one so i was really taken aback when i started to get kind of a supernatural seeming thing around her so i really didn't know what would happen was she actually going to do something magical here you know is she going to start blowing stuff up? Like, I really know what to expect. The, 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 the yellow aura reminded me a lot of a Super Saiyan aura. So that's what came to mind first. But, you know, if it wasn't for that, I probably would have been sadder during the scene as I watched her, you know, talk about this. But half of my mind was preoccupied, like, kind of panicking what was even going to happen here. Otherwise, I may have actually teared up during that scene. So I guess in that respect, I'm thankful for the the, the, the glow. But in the end, it didn't really turn out to be very much at all. So I don't really know what it was exactly. If it was any kind of supernatural thing or if it was just a visual representation of, you know, how upset she is. I'm really not sure because they didn't really address it at all. Like, they didn't say, hey, mine, you're glowing. So I can only assume it's just, you know, a visual thing for the audience's benefits. But still, it was still very, very upsetting to see her like that. And yeah, after that, they better, yeah, they better have helped. But unfortunately, even after all this, in the end, it didn't really work in the end. We got them messed up with rain, and then she puts them in the fire, and they just blow up, and that's, that's mine's life for you. You know, everything's horrible. Uh. So, yeah, that's our, 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 this plan to make paper kind of didn't pan out either. But judging by the preview, we might actually be getting our high priest guy actually become relevant to the story. Because you heard about Suri and how her baptism was coming up soon, which are baptisms are fairly very important. I guess it allows you to work. So, and I guess he would probably be involved in that, so that's probably how we'll meet up with him. And somehow she'll pique his interest and will be allowed to go with him and read books and stuff, probably. Because I, 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 I assume she'll let him know the Isaac. Well, clearly she lets him know about the Isaac, I think, at some point. But is that was that the hook to get him to be to care about her, to want to be involved with her, or was it something else, or was it just her curiosity about books and 
intelligence or like was she able to demonstrate that somehow was that enough i don't know i'm curious so i'm very curious about how exactly their first meeting goes and how things work out so i uh, look forward to seeing all that thank you for watching and a special thanks to snoki for supporting the channel if you enjoyed this video i hope you consider clicking the like button and leaving a comment because that's a great and easy way to let me know that people want more if you want to do something big to help the channel you can support me on patreon and get nice benefits like early access to certain videos see you next time